Shisha, it's not what you think. It's nothing to do with sneezing. But shisha is the Indian word for mirror. And in the province of Kutch, in northern India, for years, they've been doing a marvelous type of embroidery, sewing down little mirrors onto cloth. It's actually mica that they use. And they're nomadic tribes, so they use these as tent sidings and doorways. And what could be more charming than having a magnificent front door like this that you could roll up and take with you when you travel to a new place? This is an 18th century piece of kutch work, and it's very, very finely embroidered. In the top, you can see circles. Each of the geometric designs has a little mirror inside, which gives it a sparkle. And in the very center of the doorway is another circle. And then further down, there are some magnificent elephants done very, very closely so that the stitch which holds the mirror makes a square, rather like a patchwork, all in colors of red and green and deep blue and yellow. Then there's some more circles and a whole line of little figures holding hands, orange and reds and yellows again. And below them, a complete line of geometric patterns. It's quite easy to make up the pattern because you're limited to circles when you sew down the mirrors, so they form their own design, almost. Below the geometric border, there's a complete border which surrounds the whole door, which is almost as rich as peacock feathers, closely and finely sewn so that it covers the entire material. In Kutch, too, they do these lovely head coverings, which apparently are used for children. This one is red with lovely little circles of blue and yellow and green and little white beads in between. And there's a black one. At least the background is black linen or cotton. And then the little mirrors are again spaced evenly all over it. This is also an antique piece, but it's been cut to form a handbag. And in between the little flowers with the mirror in the center is that very complicated, twisted oriental stitch that I call oriental, but it's a braided stitch, which is quite hard to do. But it's so finely stitched that the whole surface is covered. Well, some of these things are being cut down now. You can see my dress was made from an old piece. It's done with mirrors on the bodice and on the border at the hem. And it really is very splendid in color. So I decided that I'd really like to learn how to do this so that I could make all sorts of things with mirrors. And it took me an awful long time to figure out how on earth you do that stitch which holds the little mirrors flat. And then, of course, I couldn't even find mirrors. I went to the 5 and 10 and bought some handbag mirrors and a glass cutter and cut my fingers to pieces trying to make circles. Then I discovered mylar. That's an awfully beautiful, shiny, silvery aluminum material with a linen backing, so it's very flexible and easy to work with. You can just cut out circles, and it has that firm linen at the back of it. If you can't find mylar, I believe there are some other things called glitters, which are little plastic discs you can buy. But you'd have to just experiment and look around. If you can't find anything at all, cut out some ordinary postcard in a circle, and with heavy-duty aluminum foil, just wrap it round. And that'll work pretty well, because even though the aluminum foil may be delicate, 
it's going to be surrounded by a thick rim of stitching which will hold it and protect it. So now you have your, either your mylar, your glitter, or your aluminum foil in a circle. Now comes the great experiment of holding the mirror in place. If you put it into an embroidery frame, your background material, take a great big stitch across on one side, and then go down to the other side, and finally end up with a square, making the stitch overlap the corners, just like that. Now repeat that square, come up over here, a little to one side of the center, and go down to one side of the center on the next side. Not that a circle can have sides, but at least the center between your stitches. And then go back and back again. You see what I'm doing? I'm putting a diamond on top of the first square. So you end up with eight sided stitches so that the circle is held very firmly in place. Just do two little back stitches to secure your thread, and now you're ready to do the next stitch, which is going to hold the whole mylar down very firmly. I think it's awfully hard to master the stitch. It's a sort of double chain stitch. So I'm going to show you on dry land first. I'm going to show you on the embroidery frame how to do it, and then later I'll do it around the mylar. Come up and go across and take a stitch, looping the thread so that the needle comes up inside the loop. Go down to the other side and take another bite of the material, looping the thread this time to the other side. I think I should show you the way you will be doing it towards you. This is how you'd look at it. You see, if you just turn it like that, loop it to the right, and then to the left. Loop it to the right, thread loops around, take your stitch, now loop it to the left. Now this is important, you must go down inside the previous stitch. On the left, you simply throw the thread, on the right, I mean, you throw the thread to the right and take a stitch. On the left, you go back into your previous stitch, right into it, and do the same thing. Throw the thread to the right and take a stitch. Throw the thread to the left and do the next stitch. I'm doing it in very large scale so that you get an idea of it. Now, I'll take another thread and do it around the circle. Come up on the edge and go into all those threads that you just put over the circle and go in on the outside of the circle again. and continue around. Loop it to the right, loop it to the left. To the right, and into the same stitch there. Back into your stitch. This is in very giant scale in rug wool, and you wouldn't necessarily be doing it quite as boldly as this, although it's quite effective. Take all your stitches, you see, and throw your thread under, and then throw it over this side. Be sure that it's under the needle, and continue right around your circle. Eventually, all your 
holding threads will be covered by this close stitching and you will have an effect of a chain stitch on the outside. One of my pupils in Nantucket made herself a dress. She went out and bought some very inexpensive cotton material and dyed it pink and proceeded to do cutch embroidery or mirror work in some of the flowers. You see, she added all sorts of other stitches and just used the mirrors to highlight it in places. She couldn't quite master the stitch very well. She came to me and she said, you know, this is not the true guru stitch at all. But she made a very effective thing because it still looks quite delightful. Here's a handbag that's also done with mirrors and this time a red background with blue embroidery in silk. So that gives full impact to the glint of silver. Here's a pair of blue jeans. The background of the denim makes such a nice neutral sort of background to set off the brilliant shiny mylar and I worked them in quite bold wools in orange and magenta and dirty filthy green and it means that they would have to be washed by hand in cold water but it does wash just like a sweater the wool will hold up however if you wanted to throw them into the washing machine you could do the same thing in embroidery cotton I thought that the blue jean material was so nice to work on that you could do a pillow. I bought some of that blue jean material which is brushed and I laid down my circles because you don't really have to plan your pattern. You can just make a ring of circles and then perhaps an outer ring and perhaps it's a good idea to hold them all down first with that holding down stitch so that if you decide to change any of their angle you really wouldn't have to undo an awful lot of stitching because you can make your pattern you see as you go along adding to the circles just remember to make your square like this Sometimes it gets a little erratic, but press on regardless because the whole thing will be held flat, however unevenly you stitch it, as long as you remember to have a triangle on top of the square. And then you proceed to do your double chain stitch on top, taking the thread into the material, into the wool, and then throwing the loop over to the other side and just taking a bite of the material, pull it out and pull it through. Well, now you know how to make your work glitter gloriously with mirrors. And whether you call it shisha or mirror, I'm sure you'll love doing it. See you soon. Thank you.